Well, hello and welcome to Talk Time. And this week we're going to be looking at our history and its implications for the future. We're going to be looking at the plebiscite that brought certain parts of the Volta region to join the Gold Coast, you know, to form Ghana, the agitations that are currently going on there, and whether the agitations have any merit or not. Um, welcome to Talk Time. Well mechanized machines which purifies water. I bring to you ultimate natural mineral water. Deep from underground, tasty. Well purified and corporately packaged. Ultimate natural mineral water. Let's drink the new. For bulk, call 020 379 1888 or 0244 515 801. Ultimate natural mineral water. My water, your water, our water. Hello and welcome back to Talk Time. And this week, as I said, we're going to be taking a look at our history. We're going to be focusing attention on what led to a division of, of, of German Togo and British Togoland and what has come to be known as uh, Western Togoland and so on. The plebiscite that took place, whether indeed the plebiscite had any merits or not, and whether there is any justification for the current agitations that are going on in parts of the Volta region. We are particularly privileged to have with us in the studio uh, a gentleman who has served Ghana in various capacities Indeed, his last position was Member of Parliament. Member of Parliament. We are happy to welcome to the studio Mr. Kwesi Kedem, former Member of Parliament. So you're welcome to the Thank studio. you very much. Yes, yeah. What is the history of, of, of what has come to be known as Western Togoland? What is the historical significance? Well, in 1914, a joint force of France and Britain conquered what was known as German Togoland. This German Togoland was the, f the, 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 the conquest of German Togoland was the first victory of the Allies in the First World War. And this is very significant to the Allies as well as the defeated, <laughs> or the Germans. Now, in 1919, uh, this German Togoland was split in two. One session was called Eastern Togoland, and it was put under the French. Western Togoland was put under the English. At first, it was a mandate. But after the Second World War, the League of Nations fizzled out, and the UN was born. Well, when the UN came in, these two territories ceased to become mandated territories. They now become what? Trust territories. But do you accept all of these definitions? In fact, what were the Germans doing there in the first place? The German occupation of Togo had no legitimacy. It had Just been. like the French had no legitimacy and the English had no legitimacy. Well, from a face of face, nothing has legitimacy. But according to the Berlin Conference, uh, all the occupied lands and then the intended occupied lands were recognized. So the presence of Germany in Togoland was recognized by the Berlin Conference. So that is a recognition. But, but, but do you accept the legitimacy of the Berlin Conference where European powers sat down put the map of Africa before them, and drew lines across them as their areas of influence. It, you it, couldn't accept that. It was a very unfortunate issue. 
Yeah. But it is neither here nor there. Mm -hmm. It is an academic argument now. Because we can still ask the same question. Do we accept Gold Coast as a British colony? We don't. That's we why we fight for independence. Yeah. And that's why a lot of people are fighting for, 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 for the building of an independent United Africa. Yes. But the independent uh, 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 Africa will, be, will not be made out of vacuum. It will be made up of countries which were former colonies. So the legitimacy, or uh, well, if you like it, the de facto legitimacy is there. Whether you like it or not, is so there. Why do we go to the 1800s? rather than come into the 2020s as a basis for moving forward. Why do we go to the Berlin Conference? Yeah. Be be because there's a geographical and political reality today. Yeah. Why do we reject that and go back to the reality of the 1800s? Yes, be be because uh, the, the Berlin Conference was to concretize what we call the scramble for Africa. I'm very sure you might have heard of that uh, term, yes. the scramble for Africa, where every European uh, nation was trying to carve out something from Africa. I was trying to steal it, from Africa. <laughs> steal our land. Well, in uh, prison. Yeah, whether you like it or not. So in order to bring order into the stealing, <laughs> <laughs> in order to formalize the stealing, mm -hmm. the Berlin Conference was held. Mm -hmm. And then they agreed that, OK, you, this one belongs to you. This place belongs to you. But as you have pointed out, it was a map they put there. You know, it was not a physical thing. You say, oh, so, so, and so. So you can see that, for instance, the Gold Coast, made up of so many ethnic groups or tribes, all the African countries are made up of several uh, 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 tribes. You see, some were cut across. If you go to uh, 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 Western Togoland, for instance, you see that the same town, there's a portion in Togoland, there's a portion in Ghana. The Moshi, part of them are in Ghana, part of them are uh, in uh, 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 Burkina Faso. The Angi, for, who are Kans, some of them are in Cote d'Ivoire. Some of them are in Ghana. So they didn't mind what they were doing. They were just trying to acquire. And they did acquire. So that is the essence of the whole thing. So we have to go back to the 1800s because that was what formalized the stealing, if I may use your word, the stealing. But we cannot scramble. accept the legitimacy of what happened in the 1800s. That's why I'm... As African people, we cannot accept that as being legitimate and legal. Look, it was not all that bad. There was some merit in it. Mm -hmm. Now, for instance, before the Europeans came, there was intensive migration of Africans. You know, it was the Europeans who came to put a stop to this migration. Otherwise, for instance, the Avis, we don't know where they would have stopped by now. Maybe they would have been uh, Senegal or uh, Mali or something like that. The Akans, we don't know where they would have been by now. Maybe they would have been in the Congo or South Africa or something like that. And then, apart from that, there were a lot of tribal wars and things like that. That happened in everywhere in the world. That, it happened in Asia. No, that, it happened in Europe. It happened in Australia. I'm talking it, about. It, it is not a peculiar feature. It's not a peculiar feature. But I'm talking about Africa. And mm -hmm. what I'm saying is that mm -hmm. the intervention of this uh, European mm -hmm. minimized the effect of tribal wars. They were able to control the situation to some extent. You see? So, for instance, the, if you go to a uh, voter region now, there are some people who migrated from a hunter eh, to a voter region and things like that. These things were put a stop to 
by the Europeans. And they constituted all this in, into nations, into states, into territories. You see? So it was not, the, 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 uh, as Chris would say, the <laughs> colonization was not no. all that bad. Uh, no, are, you sure, are you sure that they constituted these things into nations? They didn't. No, 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 no. no. I said they were trying to. They didn't. The but objective Because was, even after independence. The objective was to turn these occupied territories into annexes yes, of the colonial metropolis. Why not? They were not creating nations. Why, why not? They were behaving in the same way that the Ashanti Empire behaved. And they, they are behaving the same way as we are behaving today. For instance, Ghana, we call a, 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 a political entity Ghana. Are we a nation? We are not a nation. Nkrumah was trying to build a nation. Eh? Mm -hmm. Where there will be no discrimination among tribes. Where people will be accepted wherever they go. Where people will be, up, uh, will be proud that they are Ghanaians. That is a nation. Now what do we see? If you voting, we vote on tribal lines. Everything we do now, 60 years after independence, we are still struggling with each other. So how do we how, so, do, how, how, do, uh, we, how do we change the situation we are painting? Now how, painting on tribal lines, doing things on tribal lines as well. How do we change that? Yeah, that's what Nkrumah, Nkrumah had an antidote for that. That is African unity. But Nkrumah, Nkrumah was opposed to to what was then described as secession of Western Togoland. Uh, as opposed to the movement which was led by S.G. Anto. No, 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 no. no. S.G. Anto was not a secessionist. What was he? He was a nationalist. And I will explain why. Okay, sir. Western Togoland was not part of Gold Coast. Western Togoland has never been part of Gold Coast. It was a trust territory held in trust for the United Nations by Britain. And by the incidence of contiguity, because the Western Togoland was near the British colony, the Gold Coast, the trusteeship agreement allowed Britain eh, to administer them, to, not to govern, to administer them together, if it were possible. But then the international boundary between the Gold Coast and Western Togoland was not to be affected. Western Togoland has never been part of the Gold Coast. And for but you to say that, listen, 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 I will, I will finish. Sorry, sir, sorry. Yeah, I will finish. Yeah. So what Anto was trying to do was that he was trying to gain independence for Western Togoland. He had never been a secessionist. He had never been a tribalist. He was a nationalist. Okay. Just as Nkrumah was a national Isn't the Gokos. same S.G. Antor, who in 1969 or thereabout became Ghana's ambassador to Togo? Yes. Where was his nationalism then? Now, you see, you may even ask that question of me. Now, what is my <laughs> nationalism? I am from Western Togoland, but by incident of history, we became a part of a, a, an entity called Ghana. De facto, by de facto, we are Ghanaian. Oh, by, 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 by law. De facto, the jury, and all. No, 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 no. The jury, we are not. Why? Okay, in, 19, uh, uh, um, in 1955, the United Nations passed a resolution. The resolution was called Resolution 94410 to order a plebiscite in Western Togoland or British Togoland. Now, uh, according to the results, the majority of people in Western Togoland accepted to join their territory in a union. 
with independent Gold Coast. Not with the Gold Coast Colonial, with independent Gold Coast. You understand? Now, but the UN realized that the privacy result alone could not bring about a political union. The results were the intentions or wishes of the people. And they were not enough to bring about a union. You see? So, what do they do? They pass a resolution 10, uh, 10 4, 4, 11, and ask the British to take such steps as necessary to bring about the union. Are you not just playing on words? No, 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 I'm not playing. No, listen, I'm not playing on words. So, yes, what's in Togoland is part of Ghana. We, we have united, we are in a let, union. Let me tell you the sequence of events. Yes. So, what happened was that, you know, the such steps which Britain should have taken should have been constitutional and legal. There were two different territories with international boundaries. What's in After Togoland? the plebiscite, the international boundary vanished. Listen. It didn't exist anymore. The plebiscite did not eliminate the international boundary. How, oh, sir? That is why I'm saying that the union by that time had not been formed by the result of the plebiscite. That is why Britain, uh, that is why the UN invited Britain, which was the administering authority, to take such steps as necessary to bring about the union. If the union were brought about, then you would be right to say that the international boundaries were eliminated. But what happened was that Britain did not take such necessary steps to bring uh, uh, about the union. What happened was that Britain had no March, authority after the independence of the Gold Coast. Britain no, no, had no, 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 no. All this is where it has listen, ceased to be the colonial empire. Listen, all this is were happening before the independence. But the union took effect at independence. Not before independence. That's what I want to explain to you. Yes, sir. If you'll yes, be patient sir. with me. I'm very patient, sir. <laughs> patient, sir. Yes, sir. You know, mm. so, you know, with these two territories, Gokos was a colony. Mm -hmm. Western Togoland was a trust territory. Now, it was for Britain to bring together these two different entities, sit down, negotiate. With what authority? Please. Listen, let, let me finish. If you have something, then you add. Okay. <laughs> I have nothing. Just the same question. You know, then yeah. they will negotiate what mm. type of government they wanted, whether mm. a federation or mm. so, 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 what will be the right of the Gold Coast, what will be the right of uh, uh, British uh, Western Togoland, what will be the obligation of such. But that thing did not happen. What happened was that on March 4th, just before independence, Britain and the CPP government send troops. First, they declare a curfew. And then, 4th March, or around that area, they send troops to Western Togoland and occupy the place. The union which the United Nations asked eh, the British to bring about never came round. So, the notification, listen, please, the notification which was sent to the UN by Britain said the union of listen listen carefully they, they said the union of the independent state of ghana eh? and then the former trust territory of togoland are taking place meanwhile there's no document and they said that it was it took place under the ghana independence act now, if you look at the Ghana Independence Act, not the Ghana Constitutional, Ghana Independence Act, you see that it was just a normal thing, normal uh, routine uh, legislation passed by the British government to allow territories to attain independence. And in that Independence Act, there was not a single mention of 
Western or British Togoland. What, what should it have been mentioned, sir? Pardon? The people of Western Togoland, yes. as you choose to call it, yeah. had voted yeah. and declared their intention to join Ghana at independence. So what at the, independence. Let, Ghana becomes independent. Why should there be any declaration? No, no, no. no. Deal in that well? case, what, what, that was the, what, what, what was the use of mm -hmm. resolution 1044? It if, if that was the case, it what was the use of the resolution 1044, which, my understanding. Please, which invited mm -hmm. eh, mm -hmm. the administering authority, mm -hmm. that is Britain, to take such steps as necessary, such techniques, constitutional and legal steps, to bring about the union. If the plebiscite result alone were enough eh, to constitute a union, there wouldn't have been any need for yes, a resolution. The time, at for. the time of the passage of the resolution, Britain was the imperial power in the Gold Coast. Yeah, but, Bre Britain but it, was, it was a Canada. colony. Yes. Britain was also the administrator of Western Togoland. Of a trust territory. As of since March 1957, mm -hmm. Britain was no longer the imperial power. That's why I'm so telling the you that. Britain could not apply. That's why I'm telling you that mm -hmm. Britain misled the UN in terminating the trusteeship agreement of on Togoland. Because the, 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 the action they asked them to take, they didn't take the action. They couldn't take the action after so, 6 March 1957 no. when the Gold Coast had become independent and was no longer under British imperial control. They, 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 when indeed the people of Western Togoland mm -hmm. by 6 March 1957 had voted to join the new nation of Ghana and Britain no longer had any legitimate authority over Western Togoland. No, you are not understanding my issue. Yeah, my you, issue sir. is that... Yes, sir. Eh? Yes, sir. 1955. Mm -hmm. There was a resolution 944 mm -hmm. that there should be a plebiscite. Yes. The plebiscite was conducted. Yes. Results were declared. Yes. The majority said they were ready to join their territory eh, with the Gold Coast. At the, independence. Not at independence. If you look at the question, it wasn't mm -hmm. at the independence. So, so the United Nations realized that, okay. The people of Western Togoland have agreed to join their territory with the Gold Coast. But was that enough to form a union? The question was no. So what did the Un uh, United Nations do? It passed another resolution, what, uh, 10 4, 4, 11, now inviting the British to take such steps as necessary to bring, uh, 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 to bring about the union. So you can see that the result of the passages were not enough to form a political union. That was why the 1044 resolution was passed. Okay. You understand? And please listen. The part of the 1044 resolution said that, okay, after you have done everything, after you have accomplished the union, you should notify us. You should notify the Secretary General of the UN. So on March 6, you know, on March 6, eh, Britain wrote to the Secretary General and said that the union had taken place. Now, if there is a union, excuse me to say, ECOWAS, even a loose organization like ECOWAS, has a document of a sort to show that there is an ECOWAS, to guide ECOWAS, to give it a legal backing, to give it a recognition. Even African Union, there's a document. Even United States of America, there's a document. Even U United Kingdom, the Scotland and England, 1707, eh? there is a union. Even Tanzania, which is Tanganyika and Zanzibar, there's a document to show that there was a union. But in case of Ghana, the independent state of Ghana, and the trust territory of Togoland, where is the union document?
Can you show me the union document right now? Okay. As you are sitting we'll, down we'll, there? We'll come to it in a minute. No, 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 no. We'll can come, you we'll show to, me the union break. document? We are taking a break. We'll come to it very soon. So, viewers, we are talking to Honorable Kwesi Kedam, uh, former member of parliament, and obviously a very distinguished citizen of Ghana. And we are talking about the issue of Western Togoland. Its legitimacy, legal basis, political implications, and all of that. Now, we're going to go on a short break. And when we come back, we'll be dealing with the issues that Honorable Kwesi Kedam raises. Is there a document? Yes. Is there a deal? What document? Yes. Short break. Hey, Bukuya. The thing you know how the pressure to me to say, what you want to come from? I'm just a baby for now. I'm not so young. But say the one you're Joe, what? What you want to do soon? My new son can't be too much. Ah, ma. We are real. The men are not true. I'm not even mad to come from South Africa. Well, welcome back to Talk Time, and we are in this very, very interesting conversation with Honorable Kwesi Kedam, former member of parliament, and uh, he's done a lot of work on Western Togoland, written newspaper articles, and so on. And that's what we are discussing. Now, first of all, let's establish this. We are very passionate about Western Togoland. Yeah. Are you in agreement with the Western Togoland Study Group? I don't know of any group called Western Togoland Study Group. Is there any other group which agrees with the position that we have taken? I'm talking for myself. Uh, talking as an individual. Yes. Okay. Now, in talking as an individual... Oh, you, you mean the Homeland Study Group? Yeah, Homeland Study Group. No. How can I agree with them? Because what they are saying is different from what I'm saying. Okay. You understand? They are... What is the point of difference between you and Homeland th Study Group? Thank you very much. They are talking about Western Togoland eh, as including the Anglo, Tong, and Kita. They are adding all that to Western Togoland, to call it Western Togoland. And from the pictures I've shown you, from time immemorial, Anglo, Tong, Peki have always been part of the Gold Coast. Now, from time immemorial, the original map I show you of uh, German Togoland, Anglo, Tong, Peki, they were not part of Togoland. So how can somebody divide Togoland and suddenly the part which was not part of it will suddenly become part of it? To me, it doesn't make sense. How can I agree with them? Okay. So, you, you understand? So, so, so this so, is the point of disagreement between you it's a and the Homeland Study Group. It's a very serious Are there point points of agreement? To be honest with you, I, I don't quite understand their position. To be honest with you. So what is your position? My position is that Ghana, the state of Ghana, the independent state of Ghana, as it was described in the notification sent by Britain to UN. They call it independent state of Ghana. And then they call the other one the former uh, UN trust territory of uh, uh, Togoland under the UK. Do you, do you understand? We've been together since 1914. Nobody, I'm not talking about separation. I'm not talking about secession. I'm talking about recognition. That when you are defining Ghana, eh, you should add Western Togoland. It's, so, it's always added. No, it uh, well, search the records. No, it's not about the records. Everybody knows. Every, everybody that, does that, not. The, the modern state of Ghana mm -hmm. 
founded by Osajifu Dr. Kwame Nkrumah, includes the, 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 the trust territory. No. Everybody knows that. You know it. There was a plebiscite. You, the records you know. of the plebiscites are there. You, the history is clear. You know it. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, you know it. And you know it. But look, this problem cuts across professors, lawyers, and so, so, and so. Define the former name of Ghana. They will tell you former Gold Coast. So is that all the problem? That is not all the problem. What are the other problems? The other problem is that the UN ask eh, Britain to take such necessary steps to bring about the union. For every union, as Chris means to say, even if you ban, if you ban uh, buy a plot of land to build, there's a receipt on it. Do you understand? No, I don't. <laughs> I don't, a sir. plot of land mm -hmm. eh, for you to legitimize it, you need a receipt on it. No, but this is not like buying a plot L of land. Listen this to is me. two people L expressing clearly listen their to desire to come together to build a new nation. Yes, but what I'm saying is that yes. ECOWAS mm -hmm. is made up of so many things. ECOWAS is different. Yes, and I, listen, and I'm saying that it is a loose organization of sovereign states. But that's an equal protocol. But Ghana is not a loose organization of sovereign states. That's where I'm coming to. Ghana is one unitary sovereign state. Why don't you allow me to say what I want to say? Please say what <laughs> you want to say. Please say what you want to say. Eh? Even mm -hmm. ECOWAS, AU, if they have a protocol or treaty or something like that, giving them recognition, telling them their rights and obligations, how much more eh, a union of Western Togoland and the Gold Coast? There must be a document on the issue. And we are saying that we want to see that document so that we know the terms and conditions under which the union operates. Simple. So, so now, I'm, I'm, sure you're simple. I'm sure you're familiar with the 1992 constitution. 1992 constitution. Oh, I was a member of the... Exactly. So you know the 1992 constitution. But 1992 constitution had uh, nothing with what I'm saying. It has. No. The rights of citizens are described adequately in the 1992 constitution. Is it 1992 constitution? Is this a union document? It is not. It is not. But we are talking about the rights of citizens that yeah. needs to be set out in a document. No. It's set out in the 1992 constitution. 1992 constitution mm -hmm. is a constitution for sovereign unitary state of exactly. Ghana. Exactly. Yes. What I'm talking about is that two different political entities. One, a trust territory. The other, a colony. A trust territory which was ruled under the rule of law, that's the UN Charter and Trusteeship Agreement, and the other a colony which was ruled arbitrarily by the British. They, can, they could, if they wanted to, they could do anything they wanted to do without any obligation, without any accountability. When Two such different countries are coming together. There must be some consultation among them. There were consultations. Between whom and There who? was a vigorous campaign for between those who wanted a yes vote and those no. who wanted a no vote. Yeah, yeah. There was a plebiscite. People voted. They expressed their will. Ghana has never been a federated state. It has always been a unitary state, sovereign state. And I'm telling you that, yes. so far as mm. some of us are concerned, mm -hmm. we haven't seen the union document. If the union document does not exist, by de facto, we are together. Sir, but by you've law... You've mentioned all the UN resolutions. Mm -hmm. You've mentioned communication from the British colonial empire to the UN. You've mentioned the plebiscite results, which was gazetted and so on. Are all those not sufficient documents? No, they are not su sufficient. You see, the one which curbed, curbed 
all of them was resolution 1044. And that resolution 1044 was passed in 1956 after the plebiscite. Why was it passed? I want to repeat that. Why was it passed? Mm -hmm. Because the UN, in its wisdom, realized that it would take more than privacy result to establish a union. That is why they passed resolution 1044. What did they do? It accepted the, 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 the result of the plebiscite. It recommended the formation of a union. Then it called upon Britain, which was the most critical aspect, called upon Britain to take such steps as necessary to bring about the union. And the resolution said, OK, if you are able to implement all these things, then you should notify us. Britain sent the notification. They sent the notification, but what did they say? They said that the, in, the union took place under the Ghana Independence Act. Please, I, I'm very sure you've seen the Ghana Independence Act on 1957, February 1957. Mm -hmm. Did they mention anything about the union? Did they mention any antecedent about the union? Did they mention anything about Togoland? It, it just said that to enable the Gold Coast eh, to attain full responsible status. But then, you, 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 you see the point? Yeah, but couldn't it be taken for granted mm -hmm. that there had been a plebiscite in which the people of the Trust Territory had voted that if the Gold Coast became independent, they would join? Couldn't it be understood that the necessary steps that Britain had to take was to grant independence to the Gold Coast? No, in order but... to make it possible for this union to take place. You know, my problem. Mm -hmm. is that you appear to be playing on the word union. Not to let The that. union mm -hmm. does not imply that you should form a non-unitary state. It does not imply. No. Even you will still be in a union in a unitary state. Uh-huh. That is what they should have negotiated, the two different entities. That's what they should have sat down under the ages of Britain. Please, please, edges of Britain and decide, do we need federation? Do we need a unitary state? Do we need a monarchy? Do we need a democratic centralism <laughs> or whatever? You know, that is where the negotiations should have taken place under a dialogue. And they would have arrived at a mutually accepted document, call it a union, call it a memorandum of understanding, Call it a treaty, whatever you want to call it. But nothing like that exists. Okay. Nothing like, and all that you are saying, look, I have written to UNDP, Ghana office. That, that is our problem. We don't know our rights. We don't know our obligations under the so-called union. Can you please give us a, 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 a true, satisfied true copy of the union document? so that we know our rights. But sir, you know your rights. Please, please, I don't know my right. Up to now, I don't know. One of your rights please, was please. the right to compete in an election to become a member of parliament. Please. You have exercised that right, and you say you don't know your right. Please, let, 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 let me finish. So is that let, not your right which let, you have exercised? I'm talking about the union, the rights under the union. Rights of citizens. We are talking about the not citizen, under the union. Look, the cardinal word here mm -hmm. is union. We are not talking about integration. The 1955 mm -hmm. UN visiting mm -hmm. mission team, who came to the Togoland, mm -hmm. recommended that there should be integration eh, between British Togoland and then the Gold Coast. But the UN General Assembly rejected that. And they said they favored a union. It means that the UN was keenly aware of the difference between integration and the union. The UN could not impose on the people who wanted to unite. Listen. 
if the people Listen, of the trust territory look, and the, the trust people territory, of the they trust decided territory, to unite, the UN could not stop no, it. No, the trust territory did the not. The principle of self-determination the, 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 the trust territory of Togoland did not belong to Britain. It belonged to the UN. Don't you understand that okay, position? Okay, no problem. Look, Sir, the sure trust, the, the, look, look, hold this for me. Eh? Listen, you hold it for me. I'm going to the washroom. When I come back, I'll come and collect it. And when I come back to collect my phone, you say you won't give it to me. Is that what happened? Trust, trust, territory. It was not a colony. And it was a UN trust territory. Sir. It didn't know. belong to it didn't belong to the British. Okay. It has never belonged to the British. You are, you are very familiar with the geographical boundaries we have in the east of Ghana. In the east of Ghana. Yes. Because you seem to know the geography very well. Reasonably well. Very well. I mean, from my conversations with you, you know the geography yeah. very, very well. Are we not the same people? I mean, I've been to the border with, with the Republic of Togo. Mm? And I'm not as exaggerating. I know you know. I've seen a house which straddles the border. The yeah, aunt's house is also between Ghana and Togo. <laughs> so are we not the same people? But, but, are we not the same people? But complete, complete your, uh, your no, sentence. If you have a situation uh, where one house straddles the border, the yeah, same house, yes. part of it is in Ghana, part of it is in Togo, yes. what does that tell you? Doesn't that tell you that we are the same people? It is even more than that. You, do you know Kami, Le Klebi Kami? Mm -hmm. Do you know that? Le Kribi has been divided, the traditional area of Le has been divided into two. I know. <laughs> I've climbed the mountains before. I've walked into Togoland before <laughs> from Le Kribi. You see? Mm -hmm. That's not peculiar to Ghana. It's all over Africa because of... So if you are the same people, if you are the same people, mm. why are we fighting over these matters, deal, document, and so on? Then well, we know if you are the, the same, if, if, that if, we are the if, same if, people. If you are the same people, why is it that President Akufado is not the president of the Republic of Togo. Because of the colonial imposition. Thank you. And it is because of the colonial imposition. Thank you. That Nkrumah, whom you admire so much. Uh, is my idol. Uh, Fantastic. Yeah. Nkrumah says that we should remove these boundaries. But we haven't done that. Any, so shouldn't we be working towards removing the boundaries? You see? Should we be working to, towards strengthening the boundaries or removing the boundaries? Before we do that, we should do that under due process. Yes, sir. Under the rule of law. No country in Africa should take, because it is, thing is powerful, should take up arms and go and grab another country and say it's a forming African unity. No. But who's no. doing that? No, Nobody no. has done that. Let, 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 me, let me tell you this. Because in the earlier conversation, let, let, sir, let, let me tell you this. In the earlier conversation, mm -hmm. you spoke about troops being sent to Western Oh, Togo. yes. Have uh, you heard of the Alavano and the Pandu? Exactly. Yeah. They want to crush a rebellion. What sort of rebellion is that? that? Alavano, Al rebel forces are gathered in Alavano going to yeah. wage war. Yeah. They needed to be crushed. Yeah. So, you know that history. So, so... So you know the history. No, but why it was to go into Alabama? You know the history. So they went and crashed the rebellion, and the, they were, the troops were sent there uh -huh. by the leader that you so admired, or Sajifu Dr. Kwame Kumar that you so very much admired, yeah. ordered the deployment of the troops. He did not order the deployment of the Who troops. Who did? It was the British. You see, in all these things we are saying. Yes, sir. Ghana has nothing to do. Ghana has not committed any crime. Oh, okay. To the best of my knowledge, Ghana was just an accomplice. <laughs> an accomplice is an accessory to the crime. Well, but do you know why Nkrumah accepted the concept? Mm -hmm. He was, he, he was more or less pressurized to accept it because. You know, the reason, the British, the, British, the British gave a reason that 
uh, 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 British to Goland. Did not have any, it was landlocked. It was economically weak. It was tiny. It was poor. So it could not stand on its own, on its own as a political independence. But what was the real reason? The real reason eh, was the implementation of the Volta River project. Because for most part, the Volta River constituted the boundary between Western Togoland and uh, Gold Coast. And it was in the thinking of the British that, no, if we are going to do this very important project, there should be no haggling, there should be no international so so and so. Do you understand? The future of uh, 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 British Togoland. Cabinet memo, if you read it, you see it. The main reason why they wanted, not that because they love the people of uh, Western Togoland, <laughs> not that the people of Western Togoland were special. It was a river, water river. That was the main reason. And that was what convinced Nkuma eh, to support the Ghana was a very good neighbor. As I'm saying, we are brothers. We are given to each other by God. We make our own friends. Nkuma knew that British Togoland was a very good brother. But this very important project, he bought into the idea of the Britain that look, if you allow uh, Western to go and to separate, this project may not come on. So, in all this, I don't blame me, I don't blame Ghana. Ghana has not committed any crime. It was an accomplice. It was an accomplice. You see? But where there is understanding, that's why I'm saying that this is a very simple matter. You see? But Okuma also became so engrossed in a thing. It was like a dog tasting blood. And when a dog tastes blood, there's no limit of uh, restraining it. Do you remember that in 1959, Nkrumah threatened to capture Togoland and make it the seventh region of Ghana? Do you remember that? I know that. Yes. So that was very unfortunate. My, uh, my, I don't know, my, my man. <laughs> I was a member of Young Pioneers because of that. I met Nkuma for the first time in 1958 in my village. And the circumstances under which I met him eh, were so mysterious. Since then, I became his follower. Why are you not following him all the way? No. Why are you now talking like S.G. Anto? Uh, because S.G. Anto was uh, Domo. He was MP. No, 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 no. Listen, listen. He became Ghana's ambassador to Togo and Abizia. Listen. You shouldn't be talking like him if you are Nkrumah. Is. No. Nkrumah. <laughs> they say Nkrumah does no wrong. That's what they, they Nkrumah say. Nkrumah is our leader. Nkrumah is our leader. But Nkrumah is fallible. He's not God. Nkrumah has his weaknesses. Had his weaknesses. And this over, over zealous approach to grabbing Western Togoland and Republic of Togoland was one of his fault. 1959, he said it publicly that he will capture Togo, Republic of Togo, and make it the seventh region of Ghana. Why is a brother? You don't say such things. You have to use, you know, <laughs> civil oh, language okay. to talk to your brother. Okay. Do you know that Olympia was in favor of a federation with Ghana? Olympia was originally Ghanaian. Listen. Olympia, in all listen, his politics, but, acted Ghanaian. But because, it was much later that Olympia began to act Togolese. But because. But of, you know that, sir. But because of the utterances and behavior of Kuma. That he wanted to make it the seventh regions of Ghana. Say, ah, ah, 
how can we struggle so much and then somebody will make us a rigid. You understand? Nkrumah is not God, was not God. Nkrumah was fallible. Even though he is my idol, I still hail him. But I'm telling him that he made mistakes. He made mistakes. And S.G. Anto was right. S.G. Anto, like Nkrumah, they were doing the same thing. Nkrumah was fighting for the independence of his people, the Gold Coast. Anto was fighting for the independence of his people, Western Togoland. So why do you call him a secessionist? That is disrespectful. Yes, that, 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 that's extremely, that, that's sir, extremely sir, 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 disrespectful. No, sir. Of the Antos man. people freely voted to join the Gold Coast to establish the Republic of Ghana. Anto was in the minority. No, Anto no, no, was no, no, not no. the leader of his people. You no, know that. No, Anto was the leader of his people. Look, of a section, the, small the, section the, of his people. Let's say I'll give you a view. He, his people rejected him at the plebiscite. Let's, no, 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 no. You are, you are wrong. I'll give you a very simple example yes, of, sir. of Ghana. Yes, sir. 1956, July 1956-11. What happened? Ashanti voted against uh, independence now. In, in, in independence now. They voted for independence in the shortest possible time. They voted for federation. Uh, North, the North, MPP. Eh? Nothing People's Party also voted. Will you say because of that they have rejected Ghana? They were expressing their opinion. Do you say because of that Ashanti should have seceded from the Gold Coast? No. They, they would have realized that it was a big mistake. No, There's exactly, nobody. Exactly. Nobody is talking about federation. No, I'm including the MPP. They are no longer talking about federation. Listen, I'm talking, they knew that they were wrong then and they are wrong today. I'm talking about 1956. Yes, sir. And these were the realities. Mm -hmm. You know, Nkrumah swept off revolt in southern uh, 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 Ghana, which was called the Crown Colony. But in Ashanti, he was defeated. In the north, he was defeated. Now, but in the case of uh, Western Togolan, eh, the same thing might have happened because the British deliberately. You know, let, you let, know let, that let me, let me, the like, Convention People's Party and Nkrumah won landslide victories in the 1951 elections. Where? 1951 elections. Oh, I, I know. I 32 know. out of 34 seats. No, you mean the Gokos? Sure, I know. In 1954, they also won landslide victories. What about 1956? Mm -hmm. What happened? 1956, that election was held because it was a conditional election. And they won. They, 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 they won. Yes. But they didn't win in Ashanti. They didn't win in the North. Overall, they won. You understand? In the case of Western Togoland, you see, something very interesting happened. Britain who was appointed as the organizer and administrator of the plebiscite abandoned her position and rather joined the campaign for a union for integration of Western Togoland and the Gold Coast. Instead of being neutral, the governor and his overzealous officials went around campaigning for integration with the Gold Coast. And do you know what they did? They used tribalism as one of the uh, uh, things. And the, 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 the piece I gave to you, I said, these people, they use the, 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 the tiger of tribalism eh? to win this thing. When are they going to dismount? Because we have tribalism in Ghana right now. We have tribalism in Ghana. You see? So that tribalism they use because the Dagomba, the Mamprusi, the uh, Dagomba, Gonja, they have their kings and king in the Gold Coast. So the British were telling them, look, how can you leave your kings and king in the Gold Coast and go and join this thing. 
I mean, it, 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 was, it was an open thing they were saying. Look at all the history books you see. Governor Eben Clark himself, when he was addressing the Bwemkrachi tradition in 1954, he told them, look, as for me personally and the British government, we are for integration. Washington Golan is not <laughs> viable enough to stand on her own. You, you understand? So that tiger of tribalism, you see, when are you going to dismount? Well, viewers, we're going to take When are another, you going to dismount? Well, viewers, we're going to take another short break. Uh, we are in conversation with the Honorable Kwesi Kadam, and uh, we are talking about Western Togoland and all the other issues. We take a short break, and when we come back, I'd like to find out from him what does he or what do they really want? Short break. Hello? Okay, uh, wait a minute. Why? His wife comes and send a message. You have to go on the way. Hello? I mean, what's happened? It's a chunk, but who's over here? I'm going to say, what? I'm going to say, 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 I'm going to Biogas, swimming pool, plumbing works in Yinaso, Yeyebi, Freye, 0240-333-111, Anase, 0244-144-822. Me and Pa and Anne, you want swimming pool on me see? Me want to, me want to be here. Family drilling, I want to say. Family drilling. Professor Yalase. Me and Anne, yeah. Welcome back to Talk Time. When we're talking history, we're talking Western Togoland. And we have in the studio the Honorable Kwasi Kedam. Yes. Now, sir, what do you want? Oh, what you want is very simple and straightforward. You want the union document establishing the union of uh, Western Togoland and then uh, uh, independent state of the Gold Coast. One. Uh, if for some other reason that union document does not exist, we, we want it because we want to know the terms and conditions. Because some people, I'm sure you might have heard it, that they are saying that, oh, after 50 years, the union should be reviewed. Maybe you have heard it. I've heard it. They have also said that, oh, according to uh, the formula, uh, the headship of Ghana should rotate between Western Togoland and the Gold Coast. How can you say such a thing if you haven't seen the document uh, on the thing? But if you look at their map, <laughs> if you look at their map, it yeah. has been rotating. Because no. their map includes Keta. No. The map that the, the, the is not, Keta is not part of Western Togoland. I agree. But, so, the, but the map. I can, that, I'm not a spokesman for I know, Homeland I know. Study Group. But if you look and at I the map. I don't even understand some of the things they are saying. Okay. But if you look at the map they have drawn, it includes Keta. I say you are making the wrong uh, <laughs> this is, as example. I'm telling you that this is what people are saying that it should be reviewed. How do you know that it was like this? if you don't have any document to, to show the terms and conditions. How do you know? But you know that there's no such document. Listen, please. No, so don't you know that there's no such document? Look, Britain claims it has. It has never claimed that it has. No. He said, oh, that, that's why, uh, please. Re, Britain has never claimed listen, that it has a document. Britain it simply wrote to the United Nations Saying that the union has taken place under what? Under the, the Ghana Independence, Independence Act, which yes, is available. Yes, you have copies. It's, it's even here. Exactly. But that independence document mm -hmm. is nothing. 
but for British Parliament. To so, so it you, you it is not I, a union document. So you and I know that the kind of union document you are referring doesn't exist. It doesn't exist. So what do you want? So if, if it doesn't exist, it cannot be delivered to you. So what do you want? No, but Britain says it has some, some document. If they have, it has mentioned that document, a copy of which you have. Ah, uh, maybe okay. Uh, assuming that, in the unlikely event <laughs> that they don't have, but we know, we know the facts. If they don't, Britain have, says that the Independence Act. If they don't have, you it. have it. If they don't, what you're asking for is not in it. Okay. So what do you want? Okay. If they don't have it, it means by de facto there's Ghana. Ghana is made up of Western Togoland and the colony. It exists. By, by the jury or by law, it doesn't exist. So, we are appealing to the UN and the international organization to investigate the issue that what we are saying is it right or wrong? If it is right, that's the end. If it is wrong, Actions should be taken to rectify and recognize. What action can be taken to rectify? What that, action can be taken? That will be in the wisdom of the UN. Or, or we can, if we had money, if I had money, I can take the, court to the, the case to the International Court of uh, Justice. Seeking what remedy? Seeking what remedy? That the union the uh, uh, resolution 1044 ask britain to bring about was not brought about therefore there's no union document on it it doesn't exist so it therefore, doesn't exist so, so the european togoland is an independent state listen i'm is that saying what that saying? i'm saying that they should look into the thing and recommend the appropriate steps to be taken to unify the two. The appropriate steps. What is your recommendation? My recommendation is not uh, important. What you I'm are the chief advocate of this course. What, you what don't I, have an end game. What, no, what I'm saying is that yes. there's, if there's no document, it means the union does not exist. So it means that Western Togoland is an independent state. L listen. And Ghana is a separate state. We are not aware of whether it is an independent state. But what I say, if it doesn't exist, then, what then the, situation? the situation, the UN should take the appropriate step to rectify the situation. And that will be in the wisdom of uh, 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 the UN and yes, the people. Yes, 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 the yes, people. Yes. If the union doesn't exist. Yes. Uh, if the union doesn't exist. Yes. Then British Togoland yes. Mm -hmm, yes. remains a UN trustee. Yes. Huh? Yes. And Ghana is separate from the UN trustee. Yes. Is that the situation? It could be one of the no, situations. No, 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 no. What other situation could, could exist? No. The, 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 the other situation is that by the jury, by, by, by de facto, we are together. So, but you don't accept that. No, 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 no. You don't accept that de facto situation. No. The, we accept the de facto situation, but we don't accept the constitutional and the legal position because there's no legal and constitutional so, 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 so I, what you are saying I, is that i still don't get your end game yeah you are not you're not getting it because uh you don't have to make up your mind on the issue yeah you so, are so, advocate for something you haven't made up your mind about the issue how it's going to no, end i'm i'm telling you that if there's no union yes sir we are referring the case to the un eh, mm -hmm. to look into the thing mm. If what they asked the British to do, mm -hmm. they didn't do it, mm -hmm. then the situation, they say they should enact a union. We accept the union, you know. If so it is properly Britain can done, no longer enact a union today. You know that. No, the UN can do it. Or if you take it to the International uh, Court of Justice, they can rule on it. And if they feel that the union should be rectified... That is will, not their decision to make. That's no. a decision for the people of Ghana to make. And not them. Listen... That no court. court, no court. Le no, 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 no. Why, why? For instance, listen, yeah. listen. For instance, yeah. mm -hmm. the case of Bakasi mm -hmm. between Cameroon mm -hmm. and then uh, what do you call it? Uh, Nigeria. Nigeria. Yes. 
There was a dispute. Yes, between two states. Yeah. Between yeah, there's no states. dispute. There's no side dispute. Listen, there was a dispute, but Nigeria and Cameroon decided to send the matter to International Court of Justice. And the International Court of Justice ruled in favor so of... So here, who are, who are sending the case to International Court of Arbitration? Those of us... Who are, are, are Ghanaians? Yeah. In fact, we are more privileged Ghanaian than I am. I've how, never, how, I've how, never how, become how? a member of parliament, have I? You have. No, 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 no. Uh, so you call that privilege? What, uh, what, what, what type of privilege? You have the privilege to serve your country. Let me finish. Let me You're finish. You are honourable member of no, parliament. No, I'm no, not. No, because I'm there because of the de facto relationship between us. Yes. I'm there because of the de, de, de facto mm -hmm. relationship mm -hmm. between us. And listen, oh, and uh, so far as we are concerned, we don't want any violence. <clears throat> So you condemn the training of uh, militias? It is not for me to condemn or not to condemn. No, but if you don't want violence, then you don't want people to train they militias. They should do the right thing. They should stop training militias. I say they should do the right thing. Look, what we want is dialogue. We want negotiation. Eh? We want the due process to be followed. That is why you can see that I've, I, I've even, I even send the matter to you. Because well, as for me, you will be friends. Yeah, you are. And, and, and we, we, are, we, are more than, we, are, we are more than friends. Yes, sir. You are mm. one of the key opinion leaders in this country. People listen to mm. you. You see? But I have never enjoyed your privilege. <laughs> <laughs> people, li people, people listen to you. Yes, so sir. this one is a very simple matter. If. But when you say you, uh, you want to talk, who are you? You don't have the mandate of anybody. Yes, that, that, that's the what only I, mandate you had was to serve in parliament, and you did a fantastic job in parliament. Finish. Yeah, under a de facto. Yes. This is, so you don't represent the people in, in, in the former British trust. Yeah, but I'm, I'm speaking for them. And, how? Uh, and, uh, and I'm Sir, speaking. And, so uh, how, and, uh, how are you speaking for them? Just as we are, the discussion we are having now. Yeah, but nobody has elected you to speak for them. You don't have their mandate. How can you speak Who about elected that? Nkrumah to lead the Ghana Crusade for Independence? Were you the one who elected him? No. Yes, I did. Nkrumah was a leader of the Convention <laughs> People's Party, elected by the Convention People's Party. He started. Party. He, he spoke for the Convention People's he Party. He started, you think, before he started. One in 1951, his party won 32 out of 34 seats. Yeah. The people of Ghana had mandated him to speak for the people of Ghana. Yes. You had not had the mandate of your people. I also have the mandate. Even you yourself, you will support me on the issue. Because what I'm saying is the only way out. Look, this issue, people are taking it for granted. People think it's a joke. Those of us who are 70 and you have crossed the Rubicon and will soon go. In yeah, ten, we are not going and, and in 10 time. years' time and in 20 years' time, when people feel cheated, are grief, discriminated against, and they feel that they are independent of the mortgage, and they don't want to resort to dialogue, they don't want to use negotiation, they don't want to use due process, then you see what will happen. Sir, thank you very much for thank coming you. to this. Thank thing. you for this big opportunity. Oh, and God bless this, you. This. And I hope that everybody will understand the issue so that we solve this matter now. Once and for all. Once and for all. And we should do it through negotiation, Rather peacefully. Than, okay. You know, instead of going to the bush and uh, they should, do, they should okay. do the right thing. Okay. Thank you very much. Well, viewers, I found it very exciting. I hope you did. Listening to Honorable Kwasi Kedem, former member of parliament, and you heard all the things that you said. I do hope that this matter is resolved as quickly as possible. Peacefully. And uh, as far as I'm concerned, there's no future for Africa beyond the unity of the African people in pursuit of their economic, social, and political objectives. Please stay tuned to Pan-African Television because we are the best in everything. It's goodbye from the producer, director, Adam Lumon. Goodbye from Prosper Mensa. Goodbye from all of us, makeup artists, everybody, producers and everybody. Until we see you again next week. Bye-bye.